This orb will give you one XP. This orb will give you 100 XP. And then there's the God Particle. This is the rarest XP orb in Minecraft, giving you 2,477 XP. And not only will I obtain the God Particle, I'm going to build a farm for it and get a ridiculous amount of levels in Minecraft. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need to do three things. First, get 100,000 cactus by building a massive farm. Secondly, downgrade my world to create a glitched shulker box. It may look normal, but it is completely broken. And thirdly, I'll build the god particle farm and get loads and loads and loads of levels. So first things first, 100,000 cactus, which admittedly is quite a lot. However, right here, I have my cactus XP farm which works by collecting up cactus, then smelting it all, followed by removing items to collect all of the XP. The farm produces 20,000 cactus per hour. So if I can increase the size of it even more, I can get everything that I need. To do this, I'm going to need a load of materials, such as 23,000 stone slabs. And it's a good job we've already got loads of stone waiting in this chest, isn't it? Because it's going to make life much much easier and with every single one of them now obtained i need to get a ridiculous amount of spruce fences which i currently don't have not to worry though because i have loads of bones a bone meal and a load of saplings to grow some massive trees and from there i can fly up to the top and get busy mining all of the logs There we go. This will be more than enough wood. If I combine them with a load of sticks, I can get a load of fences. I have got a lot, but I'm still just a little bit short. So in order to fix that, I'm going to chop down a couple more trees. I should really build a proper OP tree farm at some point, shouldn't I? But for now, manually mining my axe will just have to do. There we go. And there we go. Next on the list is sand which I've already got. And then nether brick fences, which is going to require me to smelt a load more netherrack in this fancy super smelter to craft a load more fences. And because I have a chunk loader underneath this super smelter, I can leave it running whilst I collect the next material, which is going to be glass, obtained at the Void Trader. And whilst I've been collecting all of that, this is all finished smelting and means I can craft the rest of them. I'm very close to having it all now. Just need a shulker box of stone bricks and another one of oak fences. And that means mission to collect every single item is complete. And so I'll break this chest to transport it all to the area of construction. And then before I actually start the building, there's something in my house that is really, really annoying me. It's all these posters. I, I just feel like I'm running out of space in my house to store them all. They're just starting to kind of randomly go on walls. And I, I feel like I could make this so much better. Like, what is this one doing at the bottom of the stairs? It's just, it just looks out of place. And so I reckon in here, instead of a little nether warp farm that I, I don't really need, I can build a much bigger and much better area for my posters to go. It should look like a really cool art gallery by the time I'm finished. And it shouldn't take too long to build either. I think it's just the digging out that will take up the majority of the time. This is the entire length of the room chiseled out. But to properly finish it, I need to make it quite a bit taller. Turns out to be a little bit of a bigger mining project than I anticipated. But it's done now and I can fill in this little roof with some dirt. And now it's time for me to do the actual building of this room. And that is going to require a load of quartz. And to make sure that I have more than enough of that, I'm going to trade for it. And now I've got absolutely everything that I need to get this art gallery built. Now, when it comes to the floor, we're going to have a black and white checkerboard pattern that goes all the way to the end. And then there's going to be a skirting board around the outside with stairs like this and pillars in the middle. And then above that, the walls are going to be red, which really gives that art gallery feel. And these bats are also starting to drive me crazy, so I'm... I'm going to get rid of them. And you can now begin to see the room taking shape. All the paintings are going to go in each of these gaps. Next, I can add stairs for the roof. And because I've got jump boost, it really makes life easier. Because there's also going to be slabs going through the middle. And then even more in between that as well. And at this point, you're probably wondering why I've left a gap here. What, what am I going to build there? Well, because this is an art gallery, I'm going to build my own bit of art. So I'm going to add white wool like this. And I feel like you're very quickly going to be able to guess what I'm building. We're going to get some eyes on there. Oh, it's, it's really starting to take shape now, isn't it? Just look at him. And finally, I need to add black wool on top. And some of these paintings in my house can stay because I feel like they're just part of the house at this point. I don't want to remove all of them, but, but ones like this are out of place, as well as these ones up here in my bedroom and this one down here as well. There's, look, there's meant to be horns behind it. And I do actually have 10 posters in total that I'm going to be putting on display because I can I can duplicate the ones in my house, can't I? So get those crafted. And before I place them down, I am going to add sea lanterns in the wall 
just so that it's not too dark in here. And then all of these will be covered up by the paintings. And there we go. That's all of them. Doesn't it look really epic just to see them all in one room together? Although I made a mistake. I've, I've done the Netherite Beacon one twice. There we go. It's the Armor Trims one. And the 8,000 Days one is still on sale on sp727.store. But they are selling out fast, so get them while you can. And I kind of want to know if anybody's got every single poster. Let me know in the comments if you do. I know I have every single one in Minecraft and in real life. But it'd be cool to know if anyone else has that too. The little corridor here has also been fixed. And now I can actually focus on what I need to get done, which is to make this cactus farm much, much bigger. And it begins by placing a load of sand in a grid-like fashion like this. And then in between all of these gaps, I'm going to be adding water. All the fence posts are placed in a clever pattern so the water always pushes the cactus downwards. And to build the next bit, I'm going to have to head all the way down here because I'm going to need a load of cactus. A load of cactus that can then be placed onto every single bit of sand. Finally, a glass border can be put up all the way around the outside. And with a few fence posts placed down here as well, that is a layer done in its entirety. Which means placing down a load more slabs for the roof and then I can repeat the exact Exact same process again. And something I have realized as I'm building this is that all the time whilst I'm adding layer after layer, there's thousands of cactus coming through at the bottom, which is all collecting down here and, and just getting wasted. And so to solve that issue, I'm going to build a collection system right here. It's going to be made out of four different shulker loaders, so the materials are pretty straightforward. And also whilst I'm in the vicinity, I might as well grab myself a load more ice because that's what I've been using to place the water down in the farm. So I'll start with a hopper up here and then a dropper going into a dispenser with two more hoppers. This comparator will detect when the shulker box is full and feed into an iron block which is connected to a block of redstone which has dust that an observer is looking at. And that's pretty much it. I'll just need to connect the hoppers, which I'll do later. Once I've built another two of these up, and if I'm not mistaken, that should be it. I'm going to run hoppers all the way along here and, and actually break the glass now so that it can actually be picking stuff up. And it would have been done, but there's just too many cactus falling. So I'm going to have to add a fourth loader, which I can build right about here. Mission accomplished. Finally, I'll fill it up with shulker boxes. And then whilst that collection system is running, I can be building a few more layers of the farm. And I reckon at this point, that is enough layers added on. You can see where I started from because it was at this chest. And how many more were actually added? And now based on the size of the farm, you can see the cactus is falling even faster than it was before. And according to my calculations, I've already got 46,000 cactus ready and waiting. So to get to 100,000, it'll take a couple more hours. So I am going to dig into here, block it up and wait a couple of hours. Enough time should have passed. And look at that. Loads and loads and loads of cactus. And there's even more in this chest as well. So I'm going to grab as much as I can of it and fly back home. But that is Operation Get 100,000 Cactus complete. And now we can move on to phase two, which is to downgrade my world in order to create the glitched shulker box. To do this, we're going to be changing the version to 1.18.2. And the reason for this is so that we can do update suppression. There is technically a way to do this in 1.20 and it's called out of memory suppression. And Igna778 has done a lot of research into it. But the new methods and setups aren't quite ready yet. So I've decided to do the old version of update suppression from 1.18. And I also didn't quite have enough powered rails, which is why I've come to craft more gold. Then I can make more of these and add them to the shulker box. So here I have every single item that I need, except to create a glitch shulker box, I need a normal one in the first place. So I'm going to get six of them. And to go with that, I'm also going to need some comparators, some trap doors, and also lecterns. Pretty soon it'll all become clear why I need this stuff. And creating the glitch shulker will actually allow me to do update suppression in 1.20 as well, which means I won't have to do any downgrading for it again in the future. I've also noticed that my armor is quite damaged, so I think I should repair that. And then I have to make sure that I don't have anything in my ender chest or my inventory that would get deleted in 1.18. Because all my armor has different trims on it, that cannot come back. Same with the treasure chest, it's got a netherite upgrade in there. I think everything else should be fine. I can also grab some normal armor from here. And now there's nothing more that I can do. I'm going to get away from here. I also find it funny every time I walk past, there's just a penguin looking at me, but I don't, don't get distracted. But yeah, I'm going to fly quite far away from here just to make sure that the downgrade doesn't break any of my buildings. And then the moment of truth can begin. This is the spot 
that I'm going to use. So first, I'm going to save and quit. And then in the world save folder, I'll set these four region files to be read only. So that my spawn chunks don't get corrupted. Everything seems to be loading okay. And here we are in the world. Now I can get the update suppressor built. It's pretty straightforward to do. It's just a lot of rails and a lot of sandstone. And in total, there's eight layers of this to be built up. So I am going to get to work. And with that, I get flung up in the air and the update suppressor is done. And then this is where I'm going to need the lecterns, the books, the comparators, and finally the trapdoors. Now, in order to perform this, I first need to turn the update suppressor on. We do that by flicking that lever and doing that. Right, it is now active. We've got a working update suppressor and I'm going to build a little bit of a platform next to it using glass. Now, quite simply, a lectern with a book goes here. I now need to change this to be a trapdoor with a comparator facing into the line. You can see it activated the suppressor, so that's that's a good sign. I then need to open the trap door, and then we're going to do what is known as a tile entity swap. Okay, whilst all this suppression is happening, we're going to break the lectern, which is going to do a little bit of an update. We're going to place a shulker box, and now the game thinks that this is still a lectern, so the comparator is trying to draw an output, but it can't. So it glitches the game, and this is now its own little update suppressor, which does work in 1.20.1. But I'm not going to make just one of these. I'm going to have quite a few of them in case one of them breaks. And it's also not like they're particularly difficult to build, are they? Like, they're placing and breaking about four blocks doing that, and it is done. So far, I've got five of them down, but now I've kind of run out of update suppression line. So I'm going to have to make this just a little bit longer and also expand this across a bit as well. There we go. Made it quite a bit longer. And now to get down those final glitched shulker boxes. It's also annoying me that these two are not the same color as all the rest, so I'm, I'm going to quickly fix that by grabbing a cornflower, a poppy, and combining them so that I can dye the shulker boxes. And with that, we've got eight that are all in a row. The game thinks that they're all lecterns, which is why this glitch is going to be useful. And I can now safely return to version 1.20.1. Before that, I'll change the region files back to no longer be read-only. As we said, it's nice to be back in the present version. And this update suppressor here, it, it, it no longer works. Like, I can place a block next to it, break it, and, and the redstone just drops. But these shulkers... Well, for some reason, I can't open them. Yes, they're unopenable shulkers. And if I add a comparator here and then grab a lever, that can go on the side of the block. We break this and it is suppressed. Yes, we've got a floating lever. So that nicely sums up what we're about to do. I do also need to remove this entire suppressor machine because who needs all those rails when you've got a glitch shulker? And because it's all made out of slime and sandstone, mining it up is, is, is a pretty quick process. There we go. And that means the second phase, which was to downgrade the world and create a glitched shulker box, has been complete. And so now it's time to make the god particle farm. And doing that is what will require the tens of thousands of cactus. Let's first drop off all of these items, get my old armor back. And one of the things I'm going to need a really crazy amount of for this farm is coal because I never want it to run out of fuel. So at the moment, I haven't really got enough. But don't worry about that, because if I fly along here above the nether, you'll see that I have a working fortress farm, which I can turn on any time by flicking this lever. It'll turn off all of the lamps. And then I'll fly up to here and mobs will start spawning below. And then they'll come through this portal where I can take them out and gather up mob heads as well as coal. I've done the calculations and at this point, I've got enough coal. I'll just take out these few remaining ones. And as you can see, I've already got nine shulker boxes worth. Pretty sure I only need seven, so a few spare is always good. And I can also now switch the farm back off by flicking that lever. I also at this point feel like I need a separate chest somewhere for all of these heads. Maybe for now they can all go in my bedroom because I just don't know where else to put them. I'll probably end up forgetting about them, but the, the other mob heads are there, so <laughs> hopefully I remember. And now to build this machine, I'm going to need a load of redstone blocks, which I have all of them somewhere in my chest room. I just need to gather them all together into one place. So I'm going to get busy doing that. That is everything right there. As you can see, it's not too crazy of a build. It's not absolutely massive. I'm also glad I wrote down the coordinates of where I need to build the suppressor. Otherwise, I don't think I'd ever find it. It's like 3,000 blocks in this direction. Here they are, my lovely little broken shulkers. And somehow I've managed to bring everything Except I forgot the hoppers. I, I don't know why. It's not really a big issue because I, I come prepared. In this shulker box, we have iron. And in this shulker box, I have wood. So I can craft a few extra chests that can be turned into hoppers. I actually need 37 in total though, which is, is going to take a bit more crafting. And I don't know if I'll just make them as I go, but for now, this is going to be like this where they're going to be pointing into each other. And with enough iron, I can craft 
all the rest. And in this hopper, for the timings, I need 13 items. We'll put redstone on top to lock it. And then I can add all of the other redstone around it, which is going to be like this. We just need a piston there. And then also some more items on top. Also, if there was some way I could make some sort of switch to disable phantoms, I would. I reckon it might be possible. And yeah, if it is, I'm definitely up for doing it. And what I'm building here is known as a binary counter. Because it's going to take 35 hours for all of the cactus to smelt and get me all the XP that I need, this binary counter will slowly count upwards until it's done. Which is very handy when you want to keep an eye on the progress of the smelting. And something else that I'm going to need a load of that I completely forgot to bring is lava because each of these cauldrons all the way along here are going to be used to destroy the cactus green dye that gets produced from the farm. So yeah, going home to get some of that is kind of crucial. Although there will be a portal built up here. So it probably makes quite a lot of sense for me to build that up now. I can worry about properly aligning everything with the portal in the nether later. But not only will it potentially allow me to get home faster. It also takes me to the nether which as you might have guessed is absolutely full of lava. And very conveniently in this iron shulker box I also have loads of buckets. So let's get filling. And then I can get busy putting lava in every single one. These are all the droppers which will dispense the cactus into the cauldrons which have the lava in. And here is where every single furnace is going to go. As I said before, this is going to be a chunk loader. So there's going to be another hopper clock here. And inside this one, I need 16 items. I pretty much just use up all my food on putting it in the hoppers. And because hopper minecarts are going to be what transports the items into the furnaces, a lot of rails need to be placed. A shulker box full of coal is going to go right here. And then a shulker box full of cactus is going to go next to it. I have to make sure I get those the right way around. Next, I'm going to take hopper minecarts and we're going to have one. If we can just place it, it's going to be on there. And the other one is going to be next to it. You'll see these are going to be quickly filling up. And once I add a bit more redstone and a bit more storage on top, the entire thing is completely done. And the only other thing that I will need to do is go and grab a few items to complete the chunk loader on that side. It's a pretty simple system. We've got a minecart here. If we turn this, so now the minecart goes through and then it comes back, gets burnt. And then when the timer ends, you see the piston moves, it dispenses a new one, another one comes back and it's just an endless loop that keeps it going round and round, which also works perfectly on the nether side. And it is well protected from any gas as well, just in case. And with all of that done, I now need to head back to drop off all this stuff and grab all of these shulker boxes of cactus. These can be placed into the top chest and then I can head to the actual cactus farm through this hyperspeed tunnel and grab all of the remaining shulker boxes. Well, I would if I had the space for them. Thankfully, I can just put these into here to give me a couple extra slots and then they can also go into here. I actually just realized I've accidentally put these into the coal chest, not the cactus one, which would be a terrible disaster and break the entire machine. Good job, I realized. So I was wondering, why, why are all the chests so empty when I've already put loads in? As you can see, the, the, you know, there should be more in them, and, and now there is. According to my calculations, I've loaded up with over 100,000 cactus. And since the machine technically only needs 99,000 to run, it should be fine. And all of these shulker boxes of coal should also be okay. However, just to be safe, I'm going to wait right here for another four shulker boxes of cactus. And now that I've got them, I'll also turn these ores into coal. Just so that I have a bit spare. And as I load this up, I'm now 100% ready to run this god particle machine. But before then, I thought I'd give you a, a minor demonstration of what's to come. You see, if I place a single furnace right here, add some cactus and add some coal, it's going to start smelting. And if I also add a hopper underneath, it's going to pull out any of the cactus green dye without giving me any XP. No, that XP is all being stored in the furnace and will only be taken out if I break it or pull an item. With that, everything is smelted, so there is 64 XP points stored in this furnace. I can break the hopper underneath and get all the items, and then place obsidian underneath, as well as one on top. And if I put a comparator here, update suppression is now happening because of the glitched shulker. If I then go and break this and place a furnace straight away back down, watch what happens. The XP comes flooding in, and the furnace keeps dropping the XP over and over again. Yes, I used up 32 furnaces, but those furnaces were turned into pure XP, which is just so, so useful. So as you can see, it's pretty powerful. Now imagine that there's 12,000 XP coming out of the furnace, or five god particles. Then the player will be absorbing the maximum amount of XP possible in single player. And now for the moment of truth, I press this button and it should start off 
the entire machine. As you can see, there we go. The cactus and the coal has been dispensed and the furnaces are working. And notice, just as it finishes, a new cactus goes in. That goes back, but the coal doesn't because the coal knows that it doesn't need to go in until eight cactus has smelted. Once again, another cactus goes through. Oh, it's brilliant. And all of the cactus all the while is going down into this dropper, which is then dispensing into the lava cauldron. Which is good because then we don't have to worry about storing it. I, I don't think I'm going to need 100,000 green dye, so I'm fine with destroying it. And at this point, the furnaces have almost run out of fuel, as you can see. So this is the last time, which means the coal also moves across and then goes in to start it all up again. You can see it is refueled. So it works in absolutely perfect timing. And realistically, anything could be in here. It doesn't have to be cactus. Any Anything could be smelted using this. It's actually just a really, really good furnace array. And all the while, this binary counter is counting upwards, bit by bit, until all 100,000 is done. The design and tech was by Cubic Meter. It's very, very cool stuff. I can't wait for it all to be finished, but in the meantime, I can turn on the chunk loader, and then there's no point in me AFKing and waiting here. I might as well be out in the world elsewhere, making productive use of this time, because it's, it's about 35 hours for it all to be done. As time goes on, each of these furnaces is getting more and more XP in it. So I'll be back later. I'll, I'll come back in like 100 days time because that's how long it'll take. And whilst I could use this 100 days to do loads of productive things and make my world even better and all that good stuff, I reckon you guys probably want to see this video by Saturday. And if I don't spend some of it AFK in, then that's not going to happen. So yeah, I will be spending some of the 33 hours, or should I say 35 hours, AFK in overnight whilst I sleep or something like that. But on the flip side, something that I have always noticed is that I just never see to have enough gold so why would I AFK at the cactus array when I could AFK here and get loads and loads of gold nuggets coming through at the same time yeah I think it's a great plan I've got loads of shulker boxes to fill so yeah I'll spend a bit of time waiting around here crafting ingots and then getting gold blocks at this point I think I've been here long enough over 16 days I'm just gonna craft this little bit of gold left as you can see the shulker box is not far from being full these chests here there's, there's loads and loads of gold in them so I reckon for now I've got enough and it's also a good opportunity to fly over here to see how the machine's getting on and to see if it is working as intended. Well, the amount of shulker boxes of cactus has certainly gone down and they've ended up in this chest. So I definitely think we're on track with it and I can continue to leave it running. And in the meantime, I reckon I use the raid farm for the remaining 80 days or so. Because that farm's so versatile, it'll get me more emeralds, it'll get me more redstone and more glowstone dust. They're all things that I'm always using, so it's very, very handy. And whilst I do have a faster raid farm than this one here, this is the only raid farm I've got that has storage with it. So that would be the thinking behind using this one. I am, though going to have to get the effect from a pillager captain. Now, yes, I have a raid captain farm, but I don't know if I've got any left. Oh, I have. Fantastic. We've got about four of them here. Well, isn't that just great? Let me let me go ahead. I need a few more firework rockets, so I'm just going to grab those. Okay, well, we don't have any in there either. Not to worry. I've got paper and gunpowder. As you can see, in this shulker box, I have everything that you could possibly think of, don't I? It's always good to be prepared for every single situation. Now, let's go ahead, get rid of you. And before I actually get back to that farm, I'd better grab my sword, and I'm also going to get my chest plate. I will put my chest plate on whilst using the farm. Just as an added precaution, I, I, I won't take any damage. It's very, very safe. But I always say it's, it's still better to be safe rather than sorry. So we just fly into here, start hitting the minecart, and the farm will work. As you can see, we've got loads and loads of raiders coming either side, and they'll be dropping their emeralds and all the, all the other good stuff that comes with that. And I'm just going to stay as long as I can now and get loads and loads and loads of loot. A long time has passed. I've been here, I think, for long enough. And as you can see, I have got a ridiculous amount of loot. Just look at it all. That's not just, just in that chest. It's in all of these chests. Every single one of them is full of sugar boxes of various items. I never have to worry about emerald, sugar, redstone, glowstone ever again at this rate. Or sticks as well. We've got loads of them too. So that really is fantastic. I can throw away a bunch of this stuff. And I'd already been slowly filling this shulker box up with totems. So now I've got plenty in reserve. So I put these spare ones in another shulker box in my bedroom. Now I'm going to go and check how the god particle machine is getting on. Not quite enough days have passed for it to fully finish. I think it's about seven or eight days left, something like that. And from that raid farm, I also got up to 941 levels in there, which is pretty awesome. Although that'll be nothing compared to when I'm using this machine. I mean, everything seems to be working as intended. It's, it's keeping the cactus going. And a lot of the shulker boxes have disappeared. There is there is not many left at all. Instead, they've just all filled up this chest. Have we got enough coal left? That's a good question. And the answer is, yeah, oh, we've got absolutely loads of it spare. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch, but there's no point just standing there all day. According to my calculations, there's about one hour and 50 minutes left of it. So I want to use that time wisely to improve one of my buildings 
which is this one here. First of all, it kind of looks a bit strange that you can see all of the grass around because of the these uh, frog lights. So any snow that was on these has melted. It's quite a simple fix to sort that. I'll just grab a bunch of snow blocks and fill in the gaps. And then the bigger project is down here. This is what really needs to be finished. People always think I'm walking on air when I come in here. No, it's, it's just grey stained glass, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, this whole room just needs to be enclosed. I need to expand the quartz walls and then add a better floor underneath. So I'll start by getting a bunch of quartz. I should have enough in this chest, I'm hoping. And I also reckon that sea lanterns underneath the main floor could look quite good. I don't I don't know if I have enough there, but I can always get more if I need to. Yeah, I'm just a little bit short. Maybe just an extra stack would do it. Although I'm not sure I have quite enough prismarine shards for that. I'll, I'll just craft what I can. And then I can fly all the way over to this guardian farm over here, which would let me get more prismarine crystals if there were any left here. But there isn't, so instead, I'm gonna deactivate the mob switch, turn these quartz blocks into smooth quartz, because that's what I need, and then farm a load of guardians to get plenty of sea lanterns. That should be enough. I reckon I've spent enough time here. And there's a decent amount more prismarine crystals. Again, this is gonna be another farm that's really gonna benefit from when the auto crafter comes out, because then I can just automatically craft them without having to manually take them out of the chests and put them together. And now we can head back. I really should make some sort of portal system to get there and back faster, because it is quite a long way to go. And admittedly, I don't use the farm that often, but building one sometime that's way, way better could actually be quite cool. I also highly doubt I'm gonna have enough quartz. I've got smooth, which is uh, is pretty good. I don't know if I have that in another chest as well. Not that I can see, but I'll, I'll just build what I can. So the rest of the sea lanterns can go down here. And I'll tell you what, it's weird seeing mobs in my world, because for, this is a very brief time where I don't have the mob switch on. Almost didn't know what to make of them. Anyway, we're gonna do a bit of a border around here with the smooth quartz. And then I can start building up the walls. I'm also gonna remove all of these slabs and replace them with full blocks because this wall needs to be quite a bit taller just to hide all of the ugly redstone. That can then connect up to this platform. This is where you just kind of have to restock all the ingredients usually. So now it's operation get a load more from the void trader. At this point, I'm kind of hopeful that I've got enough there. And now that I've reached day 8,200, we're not too far off from the machine being done. It's about 20 to 30 minutes to go according to my calculation. So let's go and chuck all of this into the chest. I love this bit, by the way, where all the furnaces just come on at the same time. And as you can see, stuff does filter in very, very quickly. Near enough, all of it is now done. I'll, I'll leave the rest just to smelt whilst I'm building. I can't believe I forgot to turn the mob switch on. I, I should probably do that right now, but but you know what? I'll just, I'll just keep building. And already, the entire build is starting to look much, much cleaner. And I've also decided that I'm going to make a quick dart to spawn before I forget about the mob switch. I can go through here. It's a very, very fast tunnel, as you can see. One of the handiest builds ever made, that really. In the meantime, all of this has finished smelting, so I can now get busy and get this done. And considering the plan for this was to make the room look nicer, I don't know if just putting quartz everywhere really, really solved that. It definitely looks better than how it did, but it probably should have just been split into two rooms. Maybe, maybe this room has a roof that was that's about there, and then also a ladder right here that takes you up to the restocking area. I, I think I prefer this. So I shall go ahead and make the needed adjustments. That's this downstairs area bit finished. I will sort the rest of it later on and I would also fill in this wall but I've, I've run out but the machine's nearly finished so we've got to put this on the back burner of, of completing that we've got to get the priorities right and right now the priority is to grab a load of cobblestone so I can make furnaces as needed and then to fly over to where the machine is we've successfully arrived and this is where things get interesting it is very close to being done I've just got to wait for a few more cactus to smelt and the binary counter down there should stop the machine when it finishes I also feel like phantoms are going to be a big issue if I don't put blocks over my head so I've, I've got to make sure to deal with them which I'll I'll just do by building a nice little roof along here. It, it doesn't look very pretty, but I ain't got the glass on me. There we go. And the machine is now complete. I can turn off the chunk loader. And what have I done? I've only gone and forgotten the comparators. So let's grab them and fly all the way back. And now comes the moment of truth. We're going to first break every single one of the hoppers above and instead place obsidian on top. And then we do the exact same for the hoppers that are behind. And finally, the ones underneath. Next, I'm going to get rid of that guy and disable the portal, I think, because I, I don't want mobs coming through when I'm trying to do this. And then I shall update suppress every single one of the furnaces. And it's done. Every single time that I break one of these furnaces, it should drop five god particles. And I can break two furnaces a second if I also have haste, which means I'll be able to get 10 god particles a second, which is the maximum speed that any player can take in XP in survival. Like this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The god particle is the highest valued XP orb that is possible to get, and we are gonna be absorbing them at the fastest possible rate that a player is able to. Also, something kinda looks wrong with this beacon. <laughs> 
Can't quite put my finger on it. It's not quite right. That's the iron block's place. Hopefully, I have a beacon left. Yeah, I've got two in here, which is absolutely perfect. So we'll grab that. We'll grab an iron ingot. We'll chuck it on top. Add that and get haste too. And you know what? Just to be safe, I'm also going to make the beacon a little bit bigger. So that can also give myself regeneration as well. And there's nothing more I can do. Everything is ready. I am now ready to start getting so, so much XP very, very fast. So here is the moment of truth. I'm going to put the furnaces in my offhand. I'm going to break this and notice what comes out. A load of god particles. And then we place it again. We break it. They're there again. We place it. They're there again. Ladies and gentlemen, look how quick. We need to crouch as well as we do this. Look how quick we can break and place them. And look how fast my levels are going up. This is getting me a ridiculous amount of XP. We've just gone to level 1,000. In fact, it is producing faster than my player can absorb it. Maybe there's a little bit too much in there. Or it could be the suppression causing a bit of lag. That's, that's generally the reason. But we got levels so, so fast. And it actually gets you 24,000 XP per second, which is 1.4 million XP per minute. And get this, 89 million XP per hour. 89 million, that is crazy. The fastest XP farm ever built was Ray's Works Dragon's Farm, and that got 5.7 million. This is 89 million. It is absolutely crazy. It's even raining, but this really is so, so, so ridiculously powerful. And all I want to do is become the player with the highest level in Minecraft Hardcore. And you'll also notice, as I'm mining away, the furnace is about to run out, but look what happens. For some reason, the game thinks you still have the furnaces in your hand, so you can keep placing them even when you run out of them. So that means that there's absolutely no limits to doing this. And because I've got mending on my pickaxe, that is getting repaired as I'm mining. Honestly, it's a completely foolproof machine. Let's just go one level a second at these high numbers. It's really insane, isn't it? I mean, look at this. We've just surpassed 1,500 levels and we've got, a, we've got a bit of XP to spare as well. That just keeps going up and up and up. Don't these orbs look absolutely insane? And in case this makes the game crash in some way, that's why I've got eight of these. Because any one of these can be used for this, as you can see. And in theory, you could probably have eight players going at it at the same time as well. Anyway, it's only me in this world. And I want to be getting at least 10,000 levels in hardcore Minecraft. Although according to my calculations, that requires another 480 million XP, which is like five hours of mining. So you know what? I'd better just put my best foot forward and get to work. And would you look at that? 2,000 levels reach. I've never had levels this high in my world. It certainly is very, very cool indeed to see, isn't it? And that is 5,000 levels reached. Wow, wow, what a fantastic thing to get. So technically we're halfway there to my goal of getting to 10,000, but it's gonna take a lot longer to get from 5,000 to 10,000 than it was to get from 1,000 to 5,000. If you're also wondering what the best way to do this is, I've got toggle sneak on so that I can crouch, I don't have to hold it down all the time, but that means I can't open the furnaces. Then I'm holding left click, I'm holding right click at the exact same time, pressing F3 and T, and then I can let go of everything and it will keep getting me the XP. So that, that is the way that I can use it very, very easily. But yeah, at this point, I'm just going to keep getting busy and go to level 10,000. And now we're past 9,900 levels. We are now officially on the home straight, which is very, very exciting. You can see how powerful these gold particles are because the levels are still going up at a decent speed. And I'm just going to keep going at the mining to make sure they stay replenished. Here we go, just 50 levels to go. Now there's just 10 levels left and five, four, three, two, one. And I think I'll just leave it there just to trigger every single one of you guys. Yes, that is the fastest possible XP farm in Minecraft. All right, I'm just kidding. If you're new here and you subscribe, I'll get to level 10,000. There we go. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? And if you'd like to see a video where I managed to create a farm that gets me infinite bedrock, then click the video that's on your screen right now. Or if you'd like to see a video where I build a farm for infinite notch apples, then click the other video, which is on your screen right now. And once again, thank you to Cubic Meter for the design and the tech behind the God Particle Machine.